welcome, welcome, welcome to the weekly MSC Improv interview. My name is Will Aware. I'm the director of improvisation here at Florida Studio Theater in Sarasota, Florida. And I, uh, every week, I have the privilege of interviewing people from around the world, improv actors, directors, teachers. And tonight, we, uh, we have a very special guest. Now, before we get started, I just want to quickly announce that uh, or just remind everyone that we have shows, uh, virtual shows, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. On Thursday, we have our Impro Latinx shows, our, our, which is our all Spanish speaking shows. On Fridays at 7, we have our FSC Improv interviews. And at 8 o'clock, we have a rotating show. Tonight, we have Sketch Prov. So if you want in on that show, send me an, an email at, at wluera at floridastudiotheater.org, and I will get you into that show. Tomorrow night on, on Instagram at seven o'clock, we have radio call-in. And at eight o'clock, we have a student jam. That is something that is open to students from everywhere and anywhere. So if you want to be a part of that show, please contact me and I will get you in tonight. This is our uh, second international guest, but this guest is a bit further away from us. Right now, I believe it is nearing, it is 1.15 a.m. for this guest. She is staying up to watch this, to participate live. And I'll, I'll be honest, I've been, uh, I've not met, uh, well, we, we, we were talking about this. We might've met briefly in passing in, a, in an improv festival, uh, which will, in passing will not happen again. We will have to, we will have to appreciate these moments, especially now that we can't travel anymore. But I, I, I this, this is a, a person that I've been, uh, now following virtually, seeing what they do, and I am, we got to teach at, an, at a virtual improv festival at the same time, and she, uh, like the comments that were brought up about her were very positive and very amazing, and she, I just can't wait, basically, I just can't wait to play and meet her in person again, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Zoom stage, uh, <laughs> hold on, Gosia Rosalska. Uh, I hope I got that as close to possible. I, I, yes, I'm yes, perfect. Best. Thank you, <laughs> thank you all uh, for course, this yeah. introduction. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I got a bit shy. This is so nice, and uh, I just realized that our, our names are on the other edges of the scale. You know, it's like you have the most round name. I can imagine, and I have most square name I can imagine. You're like Will Luera, Will Luera, and I am Maugorzata Ruzalska. You know this. Is... <laughs> oh anyway. my god! You know, I I have to tell you that I love. I mean, as you like, you and I, I think are, and you and I, and many other improvisers are from the same soul of like. We're curious about humanity. We like to travel. We like to learn. And I mean, uh, I am, we're, Poland is a country that I, I, and I was telling you before we started, Poland is a country that I'm very curious about because it's a big part of the city I grew up in, in Chicago. And I just, I, and I, I'll be, I'll tell you one thing. I, I went to, um, I went to Berlin in 2006 and my hotel was an hour outside of Berlin to the, uh, to the east, which was very close to Poland. <laughs> and like, I was so tempted. I'm like, I, I should just go. I should just go to Poland and, 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 and visit. So I am- It is really close. Go, uh, it was so close. Yeah, so, so I- Berlin is just like, you can take literally a train from Berlin to my city, to Gdynia. You can just- take one train and come here. So when you're in Berlin, just hop on the train and come visit here. It's, it's by the Baltic Sea. It's nice. It's cold as we talked, but well, uh, I guess you have a jacket, don't you? Yeah, I do. I do, have a do, you, do you need Florida, a jacket when you live in Florida? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When it gets a little chilly, I bring a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> so Gocha, I, I, uh, so it is, thank you so much for being uh, on my improv interview show. So as I tell people, these interviews are, so most of my, many of my students, we have students watching now, but a lot of my students will watch it before class the next week. And they'll oh. be like, hey, what is, uh, I have a question. I, oh, that's amazing what that person said. That's different. Uh, you know? so no that's pressure. Awesome. Okay. So <laughs> I will be brilliant. I, All right. <laughs> so I, I think you'll like this because uh, 
I, and I didn't tell you this in the pre-interview, but I have a bunch of topics that I randomize to all of our, including friends of ours, like Joe Bill, Joe Bernard, a bunch of people have done this and they've taken on the topics. But I think the topic that you got for this week is, I think you'll like this because I think it, it fits into what you do. So the topic that came up is Zooming. Zooming as in like using cinematic tools in improvisation. And I'll be honest, I did not plan this. That just happened to be the next topic. And then when you sent me your bio, I was like, wow, you do, you do cinematic, like you like to use cinematic tools in improv. Yes. So, so that, that, that just happened. It was a very good coincidence. So um, that is, so we use in my level, uh, what, what class is it? Uh, somewhere in like level five of my curriculum. We focus, no, no, level six of my curriculum. We focus on cinematic tools and improvisation. And, the, and I'll be, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, take a, a time machine back like 20 years. And the, the one that like, when I was a very young improviser, when I was watching The Matrix, that's the one that did it for me. I was just like, how do I do that on stage? And like the, the cinematic editing and all of that. And I, I, we, we did a lot of things, but you specialize in this. You specialize in cinematic editing and improvisation. So that's what I want to learn about today. So please. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. wow. That's so cool. Um, yeah. Oh, where to start? I don't know. <laughs> um, so where do, where, where do you start with students? You have new students. And they well, want to learn I, about the I cinematic think, style. I think that um, what comes to my mind first is, is what I stopped, like, what we were doing when we stopped before before pandemic because it was literally during the, our class at the university when we when the uh the security guy came and said well go home now and then we never oh, no. came back <laughs> and it was in march but we were we were working because i have these uh, student groups at the university and one group is of, of the students like university students and other students not only improv students uh, it's the advanced group and uh, this is the group that is my don't listen now but they are like rabbits you know <laughs> that i test <laughs> things on and they know it and they know it and they love it so about these uh, zooming uh, we were working recently, let's say it was recently, on switching the perspective. And it's, all, and it's also kind of a zooming because um, when I was in Italy, I have this lamp that is just changing the light. So sorry for that. It's just like it has <laughs> moods. Know. It's a normal la lamp and it has moods. Uh, so I was in Italy some time ago, at the festival, and we were working on Freeform, by the way. And they were... Uh, they had to put on the little cards, the tools, all the tools that they know in improv. And one of the tools was um, microcosmos, so microcosm something. And, uh, and, and they called it microcosmos and in Polish it's also microcosmos, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And I asked, what is it? And they said, well, you know, when you look at the dust on the table and then the dust looks at you. And then I was like, oh, okay. So, then we, wow. uh, I came, yeah, deep, right? Like kind of that. Rick and Morty style. And, uh, and I came back and I told my students, hey guys, I just heard this thing. And I think we can work on that and see where it takes us. So, um, so what we did, we worked a few months uh, of, of experimenting and we, we found how can we switch the perspectives and the realities, which is a Zoom in and zoom out you oh wow hello and you can my mic again <laughs> that you can go into uh, microcosmos or or uh, macro or micro you know like big or macro, small. macrocosmos yeah yes and that's also kind of a zoom it's just like a, the biggest perspective kind of zoom 
and we were just jumping through it. Well, when it comes to technical editing, it was just like just a simple editing, you know, just going to the front. But in the meaning, the editing and zooming was that we started, we decided that we would start every time with our reality. So we are here. I'm sitting on the floor. You're in your house. I have yeah. like, I'm here. I, I see these things. You have these things around you. And then we were just setting this normal reality. And from that point, you could go closer or further. You could go to wow. smaller to the world of objects, for example, or you could go zoom into the person and you could be in the, in the emotions and play the emotions or play the heart and the brain who are arguing, or you could go up and be, um, and be what they see outside of the window. So you could go like zoom out to the clouds who are going to ruin their wedding. Oh, and uh, you are like, I love this. I want to say, I love this because like the zooming that I've been doing has been very literal. It's been like, just objects but you're talking about motions like oh it's i love it like that's that's great yeah so so zooming in and out oh that to give different perspectives on yes. the scene or whatever that's happening. exactly and then we could go to this different dimension kind of dimension yeah. and uh, and sometimes it's that the the wonderful thing that came out of it was that you can play with subtext that we are here as humans like in the main scene but then our hearts can talk and our hearts know but we don't know yet for example that no, our hearts are that. yeah our hearts our hearts are so we are talking as humans yes and then and you can hearts... go you can zoom in the uh, the reality oh, of our bodies yeah and then you have like two people, two improvisers, that these are the scenes from, from the workshops that uh, they can just talk the hearts and they are just like, uh, it, was, it was a groom and his best friend, his best, uh, man, best, best man, man, best man. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and the, the, the groom was saying that, thank you that you're again, like again, like this previous marriage didn't work out, but this will work out. And I'm so happy that you're here with me. And then we're like, and they were in love, but they just couldn't admit it because it was somehow like, you know, they couldn't handle it, but like yeah. their, their hearts were just like, you know, and uh, so this is this kind of a zoom that is like a, a whole construction of zoom. So it's not like just like zooming in and zooming out in a technical, technical, you know, camera way, but it is a film way of thinking because we don't usually think that much like this in improv and we don't jump like this this much like i mean i we do but it's it's a way of switching perspective in your brain what can yeah. zoom be so i don't know if it's that if that's what no, you so, so, your students do no, here this is, this is great no i think my students will love this this is amazing so so i want to ask you like what does cinema, the art of cinema, the art of film, add to improv, that oh. improv, that sometimes like, like improv, I mean, I love it. you and I, we both love the art of improvisation. And I have used the art of cinema to help me a little bit with improv. What, what, does, what does cinema do that improv? What, how, how does cinema help improv is, I guess, the question. Oh, wow. How much time do we have here? <laughs> because it's, it's a long story. Um, what can I choose? It's, I think that when I, when I teach my film-based workshops, it's uh, uh, in the beginning, I usually say that it's just switch of perspective. Again, like thinking it's uh, we approach in a different way, the same things about like building characters and telling stories. And because these are the things that are the easiest to use because it's harder to use cinematographic, you know, when you don't have camera. But what you can do is to build characters. That's the easiest thing, like to think about characters like in films. So what I was uh, teaching in this festival that we were together in the, the Improvest Online uh, by German uh, improvisers organized. Mm. <laughs> What did I want to say that I was teaching there the thing the film based? 
it is 1 a.m come on and it is 1 a.m you know it's okay <laughs> uh, that um, it's it's I, I think i switched my thought to another one but uh, in general that we in film the characters are never good or bad that's one of the things that we can think of that humans are not good or bad by default oh, wow. it's uh, you do things that are judged as good or bad but no one is good or bad because if we assume that i am a good person or i'm a bad person and we just play with this then it's flat but if you yeah. have heroes they all in films it's it's all there it's just like I'm asking questions to people in the beginning of the workshops. What's your favorite film and why? What's your favorite character, hero, villain, and why? And the heroes are always have flaws and weaknesses and they make mistakes because otherwise we, we don't care. We don't give a damn about them because yeah. they are not real. And the best antagonists and villains are the ones that have the reasons and they never think that they are bad. They all, we always think that we do the wow. right thing. That's so good. Like I, so I have a friend who directs Shakespeare, but she directs Shakespeare in the traditional way, the way they did 400, 500 years ago. And she tells me how the way that rehearsed back then is that I gave you your script and I gave me my script, but you don't, you don't, you don't see the lines, the lines of anybody else. You, you just have your own lines. So in your mind, you think you're good. You know, like I think yeah. I'm the good guy. And in your head, you think you're the good guy. Exactly. Yeah. And so there is no good or bad. There just is what I want. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And also uh, talking about the word want, that there's so many... There are so many things, but about wanting is also very interesting concept that is usually in films that the character, the hero wants something and it drives yeah. them, but it's different thing that what they need that in the, oh, in the end, wow. usually they, they, they go, they drive, they are, they are driven by the things they want, but in the end they realize they needed something else. Yeah. Like in the romantic comedies that they always want someone else and then they realize they they needed something else like yeah. someone else or they didn't need the girl i just watched the film tonight uh, which was called uh, love and monsters <laughs> <laughs> it's a film called love and monsters and it's uh, the post-apocalyptic when there are like a huge bugs <laughs> bugs insects who and people had the humans had to go uh, underground. Oh my God. Yes, and there is a boy uh, who wants to go to the girl to another yeah. place where they just sure. hide, and he's going through the all these. Uh, there will be a spoiler in a second, so if you want to, no, it's okay. Watch, okay. <laughs> it, just don't, just cover your ears. So he goes like on this adventure. Uh, yeah. fights like he he conquers the world and uh, he was so scared in the beginning and he was like he felt like shit and in the end he realized that the girl didn't really want him because it was seven years since they last saw each other and that she was like I didn't ask you to come it's I'm sorry and he's like oh man <laughs> and then he realized <laughs> that it was the best thing that could happen to him because it was not about her, it was about him. That he yeah. wanted her, but he needed to prove to himself that he's worth something and that he yeah. can survive and that he has the strength. So that's the, the want and the need. This is very interesting. Oh my, okay. <laughs> yeah, that we're going so deep very fast. <laughs> no, I love it, I love it. So you, uh, so did you, so you studied film? Yes, film directing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, but you, your passion shifted to improv? Uh, first, there, it was improv because I've been doing improv since high school. And then I studied different things. I studied photography and uh, cultural studies. And I wrote my master's paper on film adaptations of comic books. Yeah. And then I went to film directing. So it was after the, and, I, and still it was, I, I've been doing improv since like half, like second class of high school, I think. So half yeah. of my life, basically. Oh my. So do you, do you, do you film direct now? 
Not really. No, I use yeah. the tools, but mostly in improv, because yeah. the film needs the dedication, and you need to give all your time and attention if you want to make mm-hmm. a film. So I don't want to waste anybody's time because I know how many people have to work on film. So yeah. I will, uh, I will work on the idea that I will really feel that I want to do this, and then mm-hmm. on the script, and then on the pre-production production and post-production because there's so many people do you know that there is a function of stand in on the film set do you know what stand in does stand in, yeah yeah <laughs> i didn't know that before going to to film school that you have isn't that crazy a person like who just stands there yeah to set the, the lights and everything it's, so uh, yeah, there are even the, these people you are responsible look- even for these people <laughs> They look like Tom Cruise, but they're not Tom Cruise. But they look like Tom Cruise, and they just stand there. Yes. And then they walk away. Yeah, yeah. When everything is ready, just Tom Cruise just puts his coffee away, and goes. Isn't that to- crazy? <laughs> like, yeah. And that made me just think of how many people you are responsible of yeah. when you are a director. You don't want to yeah. waste anybody's time, and there is like so many people involved. So but, but when I do that, I want improv, to make it serious. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But improv drew you in. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, just, is, that is your career now. Yes. Well, <laughs> more or less, you know, you know. not, yes, not yes, counting like, pandemic, but yes, yes. That's yes, my, like all, I have my like own. All of us. Yes. I have my yeah. own uh, company and the business wise. And that's what I do. I, I teach improv. That's my, that's my job. Well, recently, so, I've been just working with writing, but aside of that, it's is improv, yeah, and so, traveling. So, and we, <laughs> so, do you normally travel and perform elsewhere? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But there was one festival that happened recently. I know. Yeah. Two months ago in Switzerland, it was Spunk. Yeah. And it did, did, everything did you worked go? out. Did you go? Yeah, I was there. I was teaching. I was performing. It was. I don't remember how many, but it was like normal, like ensemble yeah. festival when we had like seven shows in seven days yeah. or something like that and workshops. And we all survived, but it was like Hunger Games, really. We like every survived. day it was like that someone is not coming or coming later or that some oh, no. <laughs> a, a duo became a, a solo or that German team had to flee the country in the middle of the night because the Ger- yeah. Germany was just like decided on quarantine for people yeah. oh, coming geez. from Zurich. It was it was insane. Oh my gosh. And we, when we were going there with my sister from Poland, every day we were just watching the uh, the cases going up and we're like, ah, they're going to close the border for us. Oh, they're going to just make a quarantine mm-hmm. till the last day. It was just, it's just such a crazy year for improv and so, every living person. <laughs> yeah. Gosha. So tell me, no, Gosia or Gosia? Gosia. Gosia. Yes. Gosia, tell me about improv in Poland. Like, how is it? Do you have a sense of how it's different from American improv or other improv? It's a, it's an interesting case because we started improv in Poland around 15 years ago. And I, I was one of the, the first people here and of improv people. And uh, in the beginning, we didn't have anyone to teach us. There was no teacher coming. We just had some books. For example, like we had a Viola Spolin's book in Warsaw, they had Keith Johnston and things like that. And just like some notes from, I don't know, US. But in general, we were kids of the theater in my in my city. Mm. So we first we were like playing Romeo and Juliet or like Antigone, like things like that, like classical theater. And then we were also doing improv. And then we started a group and the several of the first groups in Poland started very similar way. So we were just uh, like students uh, who didn't know what improv really is. And we were experimenting a lot and discovering Mm. the rules. So we all started with uh, short forms, but then we went, we discovered, we discovered long forms. Yeah. (laughs) Of course we discovered like no one was doing uh, La Ronde because we discovered it, you know. (laughs) (laughs) So that was a funny process, but and in the beginning, it was all like a garage phase, as I call it. Yeah. And we were yeah. just like trying things out. And then... But by uh, the way, every every community 
goes through a garage phase. Right. <laughs> yeah, like everyone goes through that. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. But okay. this is oh, a very sorry. cool phase because you yeah. can you don't you don't really know what's there yet. And you just mm -hmm. like you're just trying things out and you it's think so you cool. are yeah. you are the first or that you just discovered something cool. And then you open to the world and then Poland opened and we started working with people from abroad. Some people were going to Chicago, some people were going to Europe abroad. And, mm. uh, and then it started getting some influence from outside. And then the, mm. the, the trends started. So there was a trend wow. of, of Harold in Warsaw because they were going to Chicago and there was like this, you know, praising Harold. And we're like, what? <laughs> And then we were, the rest of the Poland was making jokes of Harold, <laughs> really. And then, <laughs> because it was like, mm, what, really? We don't want to watch that. <laughs> that was right, Harold yeah. in Poland for a while. And then there was like a slow improv thing coming from uh, somewhere in Europe, like two guys from Europe that I forgot the names. But there are like trends. Now, la last year it was musical, but like, I feel like now it's like this explosion of very specific things. So improv is, is, is leaving the phase of just improv and is going to the phase of being specific and having yeah. like genres or having your own styles that you don't have Which to just I think go. It's fine. I think, I think it's fine because it's like theater, regular theater has genres. Yeah, of course. So why can't improv? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but now it's just like the people went through this first phase of being excited of just improv and going on stage, and now uh, the, some of the groups are getting their own style or they are like yeah. what they really like, what they really want to do. So that yeah. that's cool, and I'm very curious what how it's gonna be in the next years. But we have several festivals. I think three or four of them are international, so it's 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 growing very fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, wow, Gosha. So I know we're closing in on the uh, end of this, but your, oh. I think like the way you, you, uh, I love the way you encapsulated the film into improv. Because I think that I, I learned a lot from film. And like I, I do workshops. So there's some film workshops I do where I'm like, we watch a film for like the opening of The Matrix, the opening of The Matrix, or the opening of Saving Private Ryan. And so I, I make my students watch it and I'm like, okay, I want you now to recreate that scene through improv, like using your body. Like how do you recreate the opening of Saving Private Ryan or the opening of nice. The Matrix oh, yeah. or the opening of whatever, right? And it's a great challenge. There's, there, there is a lot to learn, right? There's a lot to learn from the cinematic yeah. voice. Yeah. Yes. A lot and as you're saying about recreating a scene I um, because in film school I was studying film directing so it was focused on that but before I I graduated photography and uh, at the Academy of Fine Arts and I also find very interesting and not many people really uh, focus on that again is the the composition of the stage that you can make a picture on stage and oh, uh, yes, like yes. you know like there are like different styles of you know composing the dominant and everything yeah so what are the more most influential as an improv director one of the most influential film directors for me so it was james cameron from titanic and yes. terminator and all that so i i watched a director commentary with him one time and he was just like he was talking about okay so when you directed a, a, a scene the audience's perspective is over here. So the next scene should start here and then go somewhere else. And then the next scene should start here and go somewhere. And like, so he was talking about manipulating where the audience's focus was. And that, I, I will say that that inspired me as an improv director. So if you look at a lot of my free form work is inspired by that quote from James Cameron nice like manipulating the audience's perspective and where they're what they're watching where they're going yeah but also this is uh, 
uh, I'm just speeding up because we need to we need to finish. But uh, it's also very interesting that usually people, when they want to drag the attention on stage in improv, they are getting louder and faster. Mm -hmm. And when you have people, to, that's again about composition that you can have. Uh, if you have six people and five of them are getting loud and fast, and if you have one person just standing there and not saying anything, this person will drag the attention. And sometimes yeah. it's better just to sit on the side and just wait and watch or look the other way. And the audience, just after a second of seeing the, the, the hive, they will see yeah. this one person sitting there. That it's, it's not always the loudest, that we don't have to be loud to drag attention. And sometimes if yeah. you stand back to the audience in the back of the stage, they will watch you and not two people talking in the front because yeah. they will be wondering yeah. what's there, why, what is it yeah. about? Yeah. That's the, that's the question yeah. that I ask the most. What is it about <laughs> in scenes? Yeah, what is the scene about? Yeah. Gosh, yeah, this has been so good. I, I've enjoyed this <laughs> thoroughly. Oh my God. Like Me too. I we need to talk wait. more. <laughs> Next time we see each other, we cannot walk by each other. No. No, no, no. Way, no. <laughs> it will be the camera like this and just like going. With yeah, it. like wide, wide, uh, wide angle then <laughs> zoom. zoom. Yes, <laughs> close uh, up, exactly. Gosh, I, this has been so enlightening for me. I think my students will really appreciate this. So thank you. If you want to just uh, talk to me and be in contact, just uh, find me <laughs> wherever, like on yeah, Facebook or page or. or just, just talk to me. I love talking about I, I will connect. I will connect people to you. I really appreciate you being here. I really appreciate everyone for watching. Thank you so much. Uh, Gosha is uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, we've, we've briefly met in person. We've talked a lot virtually. I can't wait to meet her in person. I can't wait for all of you yes. to meet her in person. Hopefully one day we could bring Gosha down here to Florida with the rest of our ensemble. That would be amazing. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, thank you so much for watching the FST Improv interviews. Uh, again, this is Will, uh, Director of Improvisation at Fortitude Improv. Thank you for, so much to Gosha Rosanska, our guest thank tonight. You. And uh, we will be back tomorrow night with two virtual shows. We have one more tonight at 8 o'clock in about 10 minutes. So uh, please, uh, if you're interested, send me an email or a direct message and I'll get you into that show. Thank you so much, everyone, and uh, have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>